Hello and welcome to 97% Fire. My name is Colin and in this series we'll be building a temporary recording studio using a dining room as a live room and a small office as a control room. Right, let's crack on. Now, why temporary? Well, this channel will have another series where we build a complete purpose-built recording studio from the ground up with bricks, blocks, concrete, room inside a room, floating floors, all that type of stuff. And this is also a good test bed for any of the equipment that we probably have. But for now, I need to nick the dining room, so I've got somewhere to practice. So first things first, let's start with the tour. You can consider this an epic home, well, dining room, and here it is. So at the minute I've got a drum kit set up. And then over there we have a bass amp, a keyboard, and a guitar amp. So what we're going to do is clear the room. I have just received from my friend Jeff, who owns an online store, a new microphone to work on the iPad. So I got this £27. It's going to be good. All you have to do is you have some more. We have to Andy Peters' job soon on QVC. So you get a little mic, like that, a little lapel mic. So we just have to turn on somewhere. Now we're doing this without reading the instructions, because that is the rules. Shock mountable, a little dongle that plugs into the iPad. So let's pop that in there. So, take two. I wonder if you can hear me. So what you needed to do was take a little plastic pad off the back of the charger and put it in the box. And then when you take it out of the box, it goes blue. Although it still looks white on the screen. Little pins in there, wake it up. You pop it back in the box. And then that plugs into USB and keeps it charged. So in theory, you can hear me, or I'll just talk to myself again. <laughs> over the coming episodes, we're going to build a makeshift recording studio using the kit that I've collected over the last 20 years. 10 years, I'm not that old. Uh, this is something you can do at home too. So if you're interested in recording, or you're in a band and you wanted to track a demo, or you had a drum room in your garden, and you wanted to do remote drumming or teach guitar, then you should be able to follow the tips and tricks that we're going to do here. This one will be suitable for rock music with the live drums, guitars, bass, but you can do it for any type of music really. If you're in the ukulele orchestra of Great Britain or you happen to love bagpipes, it'll still work. Using the existing space and equipment, we're going to optimise every part to the best it can be within its own limitations. So clearly, this is not Abbey Road's drum room, but we can make it the best we can make it. What we're hoping to achieve is a set and forget space. So you can literally walk in, hit record and capture the best drums, guitar, bass, so on. And that focuses the mind on the music rather than sitting at a desk for days on end editing. It'll also be a really cool room where you can come and write or rehearse with a band. 
So we need to clear the room and start with an empty space. And then we're going to tape the floor, which will become clearer later. We're going to take basic room acoustic measurements using IR capture and apps. We're going to build some temporary acoustic panels, keeping in mind that this will need to be returned to a dining room for Christmas. And then we're going to repeat the uh, app calculations to see what, if any, difference the acoustic panels made. We're going to prep and install the musical equipment, like the drums, the guitars, the bass amp. So, tune in the drums to get the best tone from it, where to place them in the room so it sounds the best. We're also going to reduce the size of the drums you can see down. We're going to run through, select and install the appropriate microphones, all of which will be in a budget of between 150 and 200 quid. So nothing too fancy, keep it all achievable. And then we're going to optimise the record input, so everything from EQ, compression, gating and so on. So it's as good as it can possibly be at the point of capture, but also leaving enough processing. So if you did want to send it off or mix it yourself later, you could. And then we're going to record various configurations of the drums, or try X, Y, A, B, Glenn, Johns, that sort of stuff, to see which sounds best. The whole point of a small room recording like this is to actually eliminate the sound of the room so that you can apply your own reverb later, as you'll never get a small room to sound as good as a large room with a massive kit. We're also going to turn our attention to the control room, which is a small office next door. We're going to do the same thing there. We're going to clear the room for a clean start. We're going to then install some speakers. We're going to treat the walls for reflections. We're going to use a sound ID software, which will enable the room to be tuned. So if there's any standing waves, we can eliminate that as much as possible. We're also going to build and install a cloud above the desk and a small bass trap at the back of the room. Uh, we'll then run the tuning software again to see what, if any difference it's made and should you buy it or should you not bother. Then we're going to wire up a 24-channel digital mixing desk, which will be controlled from either room, but it will sit next door, and then we'll have snakes running into here. I'll be able to get fold back and so on. And the same with the computer. We'll set up a Pro Tools template project that you can just open, and that will allow you to hit record, and everything there will be optimised. They'll have a stems bus for the drums, one for the bass, guitar, so on, and then there'll be a master chain bus as well. Which means so the stuff that you bounce will come out pretty close to a good quality demo. We'll also be able to control all of that, hopefully, he says, from in here using these screens that we've already installed. And then all the information, so the sound of the room, the reverb time, all that will be available on the website, free to download, as will the comparison tracks and so on. So if you've got any questions, do put them in the comments, I'd love to hear them. If you've done a similar room yourself, please let me know how you got on. Might save me some time. And if there's something I've missed that you might be interested in uh, seeing, then do mention that. Now, first things first, I can't begin to explain how precarious that camera is there. see this room is set up mainly for practice which is great fun but doesn't sound particularly good so the first thing we're going to do is clear the room so then we can do some acoustic measurements of the room cue the time lapse half done. Now I've just got the other half to do. Just found the studio assistant to sleep. Yes. <laughs> okay, same room, different direction. 
Let's go. So there you have it, one mostly empty room. Now there's just one thing to do before we go any further. So in the next episode, we'll be doing some calculations using a few apps and I'll show you a really simple way to work out the impulse response of the room. Please like and subscribe. If you know anyone that's interested in this project, or if you've done a project like this yourself, please leave some comments below, and I'd love to hear how you've done your own.